Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to cover AWS key storage services. All right. So if you guys remember, if we open AWS or AWS console, you should find here basically a list of services available. You'll find there is compute, there is analytics, there is you know I um, security, including IAM and so on. And there is simply here our storage and databases. There are tons of them, but primarily I'm gonna focus on four of them that are coming up here. First, I'm gonna discuss Amazon S3. We're gonna use it extensively throughout the course. And then we're gonna cover Aurora RDS, which stands for Relational Database Storage. And then we're gonna have Redshift, number three. And then we're gonna have DynamoDB. These are kind of the four key storage, and it's important to differentiate between them because one of the most important, uh, I would say, questions on the exam that they don't test you on how to write code, for example. They don't care about, let's say, you know, about the math, for example, or let's say the equations of deep learning or machine learning. Most of the time, all the questions talk about basically uh, solutions. How to integrate, let's say, our uh, Redshift with, let's say, Aurora and Amazon S3 with a bunch of other algorithms to come up with a fully kind of a service, end-to-end -end service. You will find like a lot of the questions on the exam are related to how to basically come up with a system basically by integrating all these services together okay and that's where the essence and that's why i highlighted here this one as red because i want you guys to fully understand what's happening what are the difference between them because you will find them are integrated with let's say you know kinesis data streams kinesis analytics there's tons of other services so you need to know what are the bases of storage first okay so let's start with the first one, which is Amazon S3. Amazon Simple Storage Service, or S3, is a storage service that allows enterprises, individuals, to store and protect any amount of data. What's beautiful about S3, that it's extremely easy to use and allows enterprises to organize their data and configure finely tuned access controls. So I can actually change the access controls very, very on a granular level. So I can give access to some people. I can, you know, like deny access to other people. And Amazon S3 is extremely durable up to 99.9999%, which is pretty amazing. All right, so what does it look like? This is basically what Amazon S3 looks like. In the next section, we're gonna have an entire section that discusses Amazon S3. What are the security, encryption? What does it look like? But here, I'm just giving you an overview of just, you know, what does it look like? Just to give you a feel of it, okay? In the next lectures, we're going to discuss that in a lot more details. But that's what it looks like. So you basically create a bucket, okay? Think of it as, you know, as a bucket, basically. And then you simply upload data to it. You create that bucket, you know, kind of a container. And then you throw data in it. Pretty easy, very straightforward. And it's pretty easy, uh, pretty simple, too. The next one is what we call it RDS or Amazon Aurora or re relational uh, Amazon Relational Database Service. So Amazon Aurora is a fully managed by Amazon Relational Database Service or RDS. It's a transactional style database. It's basically based on MySQL and you don't have to deal with any administration tasks such as hardware provisioning, creating backups and database setup, which is amazing. And actually you will find this as kind of a common feature in most AWS services they try to make it easy to use, like unbelievably easy to use. You can build, you know, a massive, very complex system with just a bunch of clicks, which is pretty incredible. You don't need to be an expert, you know, in IT or like data management to actually develop these systems. You'll find it's actually very, very easy to use um, just to get things going. Obviously, if you want to customize it and so on, you need, you know, obviously, obviously a lot of expertise and technical knowledge. But just to get things starting, to get things going, you don't need to worry about like establishing services, servers and buy them and databases and do all that stuff. You know, they made it very, very easy. And it features continuous backup to Amazon S3 and replication across three availability zones as well. And there are many engines available to create database. OK, so here are the different engines. So actually, when you open RDS and you want to create a database, there are tons of engines available for you to choose. So you can choose Amazon Aurora, you can choose Oracle, you can use MariaDB. There are tons of other, you know, like services. And that's basically how you create your relational database using Amazon, uh, Amazon Web Services. 
The next one or the third one is Amazon Redshift. Amazon Redshift is the fastest cloud data warehousing service. If you guys remember data warehouse, where I used to collect data from other databases or other sources and basically use them for analytics. Basically, Redshift is an AWS service that can do that for you. So it can be used simply to perform business analytics. It's extremely fast, optimized for performance since it relies on column storage data and it performs data compression as well. And queries are run against data stored in Redshift storage or against data stored in Amazon S3. And Redshift uses a unique data warehousing architecture that relies on massively parallel processing. The idea is that you can basically do a massive business analytics on you know, tons of data very, very fast and very, very, at very low cost. And MPP simply parallelize and distribute the SQL operations. And Redshift as well uses machine learning to optimize performance. So even if you are training, let's say, a machine learning model and you are using Redshift, Redshift embedded in it, you can actually, like in its own, there are algorithms, there are machine learning algorithms in there trained to optimize performance, to give you the best performance ever. All right, so let's take a look. So if you guys remember, we used to have the, uh, for the data warehouse, basically we collect data from several, several databases, and then we collect them here, and then we, in the data warehouse, and then we do data analytics. So for AWS, Redshift is basically the solution for you. It consumes data from many sources and create a layer optimized specifically to perform analytics. So I can draw bar charts. I can draw, let's say, you know, line, line charts. I can, you know, visualize, let's say, you know, the distribution of customers on a map. I can do whatever I want so I can gain valuable business insights. All right. And what you could do as well here is that you can launch uh, Redshift very, very easily. You can launch a cluster from here. So basically, that's when you open uh, Redshift. This is the Redshift dashboard. Obviously, there are tons of features and tons of uh, options. Again, nobody will question you about like how to set up, you know, Redshift and so on. It's just, again, systems integration or services integration. That's all what it is. And basically, here you can launch simply a cluster of Redshift very, very easily with just a bunch of clicks. All right. The... Again, within Amazon Redshift, there is a specific service, uh, which we'll call it Amazon Redshift Spectrum, okay? So AWS Amazon Redshift Spectrum allows analysts to run SQL queries on data stored in Amazon S3 buckets directly. So basically you can, you have, here you have your Amazon S3, here you can use Amazon Redshift Spectrum to basically query data and access data from S3 directly and then you can use obviously data visualization tools. And we're gonna discuss that there is you know, a service by AWS called Amazon QuickSight that you can use to visualize the data. So just long story short, Amazon Redshift Spectrum can help you access data as well directly from Amazon S3. You can basically run the queries directly into the bucket, whatever bucket you specify in S3. Redshift can dramatically save time because it does not require transferring data from S3 to a database. So basically beforehand, if I'm going to use the vanilla Redshift, basically, I need to have the data, move the data from S3 to a database and then use Amazon Redshift. Here, Amazon Redshift Spectrum can directly access data in S3. And Redshift Spectrum can work well with unstructured data in S3 as well. All right. What about the fourth one, which is Amazon DynamoDB? If you guys remember beforehand, these are the four important kind of, you know, data storage types offered by AWS that I wanted to cover. So here regarding DynamoDB, if you go here, Amazon DynamoDB is a fully managed, no SQL key value and document database. So it's not a relational database and there is no schema required. It's basically a way of, of, of storing data in what we call it key value, key value pairs, basically, something like that. So I have, let's say, customers, and within the customers I have, there is an ID for the first customer, that's customer one. There is a name, for example, let's say Ryan, age 28. Actually, that's not my age, but you know, this is just a sample here. And here I have another ID, which is, let's say, ID of two. I have another name, which is, let's say, Mitch, and age, let's say, 21. So you can store data in a key value format. And DynamoDB is extremely scalable with minimum latency. You can have 10 trillion requests a day. I just, you guys, I just want you guys to, to sync it in. You can have 10 trillion requests a day. 
You can make 20 million requests a second. Just incredible, just amazing. You can create a new table for your application and let DynamoDB handle the rest. And it works great for storing machine learning models for inferences by applications. And if you guys want to understand and learn more about Amazon DynamoDB, please go ahead and watch this video. It's very, very useful and very interesting. And that's basically Amazon, Amazon DynamoDB in a nutshell. Okay, and basically that's what the, um, the uh, dashboard looks like. And you can create tables, you can basically add and query items, and you can monitor and manage tables as well. All right, okay, and that's all what I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you guys are enjoying the course so far. And please go ahead and finish all the quizzes and finish and try to um, basically, again, as I mentioned, collect the code so you will be able to unlock all the features available for you guys and all the additional prize or, you know, 10 uh, Q&A or questions and answers for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy this lecture and see you in the next lecture.